What's up everybody, my name is Joe Brown, this is the Heresy Financial Show, and today we are going to be talking about the new ETF that allows you to short Bitcoin, B-I-T-I, and why this indicates that the bottom in the Bitcoin bear market might be in. There's a lot of Bs. So we are going to look at why this might signal the bottom of the bear market in Bitcoin and why there are some huge dangers that you need to watch out for with trading vehicles like BITI. Many dangers that most people are not aware exist with vehicles like this. Ready? Let's dive in. Today's sponsor is Swan Bitcoin. I use Swan Bitcoin every single day in order to buy Bitcoin. When you buy Bitcoin every single day with a small dollar amount, you take advantage of the volatility, number one, and on days where it's lower, you are actually purchasing more Bitcoin at those lower prices. And when it's higher, you purchase less Bitcoin because it's the exact same dollar amount, which means that on average, your cost gets lower over time. Swan is the best way to do that because it's the easiest, the cheapest, and most secure because they allow you to auto withdraw your Bitcoin to a wallet of your choice every single week. And if you sign up with my link in the description below, you will get $10 worth of Bitcoin just for signing up. Take a trip back in time with me to October of 2021. We can see here that ProShares in October of 2021 had just launched a Bitcoin ETF called BITO was the symbol, and it topped a billion dollars in assets in just two days, one of the biggest of all time. But take a look with me at this disgusting chart of this ETF. And we can see that on the day that it launched, it popped up, dropped down a little bit later on. And in November, popped up a little bit more to hit that same high and has done nothing but fall ever since then to the point where it came out at $40 per share, just about. And it is currently trading under $13 per share. Well, why is this? Why did this long Bitcoin BITO ETF just decide to tank and crash and go down from the date that it launched? Well, if we take a look at the price of Bitcoin during that exact same time, we can see that the end of October when this launched was just about the high for Bitcoin. In fact, when we zoom out here, this was during the time when it was trying to get above the all time high from April and it tried a few times, ultimately failing and has just done nothing but go down since then. So it's no surprise that an ETF that tracks Bitcoin and is supposed to go up or down along with Bitcoin has gone done nothing but go down at the same time as Bitcoin doing nothing but going down. This highlights the first principle that we are talking about today, which is that by the time something is available for retail investors, it's usually a sign that that cycle is at the end. When you hear your dentist give you stock tips, when you have your Uber driver telling you how rich he's getting trading crypto cryptocurrency or NFTs. When you have your mother-in-law asking you, hey, how do I buy Bitcoin? It might be a sign, might be a little bit of a signal that it has gotten so widespread and so out there that the average person who is uneducated in that area is finally hearing, hey, everybody's getting rich off of this. It might be time for me to get in. Might be a sign that you're near a top. This has happened countless times throughout history that by the time the retail investor has access to something, it's the end of the cycle. Not that it won't ever come back in the future because I'm talking about a cycle here. I'm not talking about an all time high or low, but typically by the time retail investors hear about pets.com, the dot com bubble has already started to burst. You're near the top. And it seems like that might be what was happening here with BITO, which was the ETF that was supposed to make it very easy for the average investor to get price exposure to Bitcoin by just having to buy an ETF that marked pretty closely marked the top. And so we come to this news that recently Bitcoin short ETF BITI launched just a few days ago. And that should give you cause for concern because again, by the time the average investor looks at something and says, hey, I've heard Bitcoin is crashing, so I might wanna make money on this by shorting Bitcoin. Most people don't know how to do that, so you give them an ETF to do that 
by the time that comes around, it might be too late. Now, if we take a look at this chart for BITI, you can see that it's only been around for just a few days here, and it is currently above the price that it launched at. And I do actually still expect very decent likelihood that Bitcoin falls down to 12,000 ish somewhere around there and then probably pops back up pretty quickly. And so I would anticipate at least short term that there is an opportunity to make money here with buying this ETF because I do expect that Bitcoin might fall from here a little bit more. I don't expect that it will last that long. And so the question would be, well, then how do I protect myself from the risk of shorting Bitcoin when the downside for Bitcoin is pretty limited using a vehicle like BITI? And here's where I want to highlight what the risks are with this, because again, like I said at the beginning, they're not what people think. Let's say Bitcoin very quickly here. We can see this chart in one day, let's say, goes from 20000 down here to this $12,000 mark. That would cause the price of this ETF, BITI, to skyrocket. And anybody who timed that right, let's say bought BITI right now and then sold it the next day when Bitcoin was down at 12000 and completely got out would make a killing. However, the risk here is that it doesn't happen overnight. So let's say we look back at Bitcoin here and we see, you know, over the last couple of years, there have been long periods of time where it has been volatile and just moved sideways during this time from January through May of 22 earlier this year, from May through July of 2021, from February through May of 2021, there can be long periods of time where the price Price moves sideways but is volatile. This is where the biggest risk comes in with a fund like a short fund like BITI that is a derivative because ultimately a derivative is something if you imagine a boat that's pulling a tube behind it the boat turns to the right and whips that tube to the left and then the boat turns to the left and whips that tube to the right the amount of space that that tube is moving left to right is usually far larger than the amount of space that the boat is taking up because it's a derivative its movement is influenced by to a leverage effect what is pulling it and so something like biti number one it's a derivative so it can be much more volatile than what it is supposed to track the second thing is a risk called beta slippage because it tracks it on a daily basis so if bitcoin goes up one percent then biti should go down one percent and if bitcoin goes down one percent biti should go up one percent but start off with a hundred dollars for me real quick what is one hundred dollars and you lose ten percent where are you at $90. Now add 10%. Where are you at? $99. So you went down 10%, then you went up 10%, but your net result is you're still down 1%. And the key is it doesn't matter what order this happens in, because if you go from $100 and you first go up 10%, where do you go? You go up to 110. And then you go down 10% from 110, where do you go? 99 because 10% of 110 is 11. So you end up at 99, the same place. So it doesn't matter what order these happen in. So when you have funds that are supposed to track the daily performance of another thing, and you have that thing that they're tracking moving sideways, it's going up and down and up and down and up and down. The thing that it's moving will be going up and down, up and down, but the tracking is a derivative. And so the tracking will lose value over time. So if we look at BITI, instead of just seeing this move sideways over time, like it's been doing for the last couple of days, if Bitcoin slowly trends downward even, so we look at Bitcoin and it slowly moves to the side and downward. So it moves from 20,000 down to let's say 13,000, but it takes six months to get there and it moves up and down along the way. BITI will likely not benefit. So even if the move you expect to happen happens, even if Bitcoin falls from 20,000 to 13 or 12,000, but it takes six months to get there and it's volatile along the way, it is very possible that BITI does not move up. Even though it's an inverse fund, it's very possible it doesn't move up because not only is it derivative, so it's more volatile, not only is there beta slippage because it's tracking the daily performance, not the long-term performance, but there's also an expense ratio. So there's a bleeding effect 
where money just leaves the fund in order to pay for the managers to run the fund. And so there's a bleeding effect. So even if Bitcoin didn't move at all, you would still have BITI trend down over time from funds slipping out, leaking out to pay the managers to just run the fund. So vehicles like this are extremely dangerous. They are useful tools for very short term trading with very tight limits, very tight stops in order to protect yourself if an unexpected move happens where you're watching it closely and they are not meant for you to just throw some money in, sit on it long term, dollar cost average in. These are short term trading tools. You have to be aware of the inherent risks with tools and vehicles like inverse funds and leveraged funds because long term they will absolutely destroy any wealth that you think you are going to build in them. And as a contrarian indicator, the very fact that shorting Bitcoin is now easily available to the masses means that it's very likely that the profitability of that trade is close to its end. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.